phishing isn't just about suspicious emails anymore. With the rise of social media and messaging platforms, attackers are finding new ways to reach their targets, often encroaching into their personal lives. This video explores these evolving threats and demonstrates how to protect yourself in both the office and beyond. Hey, have you ever received a weird text from someone clearly pretending to be your boss? Oh yeah, I just got one this morning. Something about free gift cards. Same. It seemed pretty real. Mention our one sales rep by name, and it said it was urgent. It even came from a number that kind of resembled our internal messaging system. A classic case of smishing. Oh, smishing? Phishing done via SMS. It's becoming way more common, especially for people who work in roles like HR, sales, or leadership. There's also vishing, which is voice phishing. Oh, I had no idea these existed. Or even had names. That takes place on a phone call or voicemail. Yeah, phishing is no longer confined to just email. Attackers are targeting people through social media platforms and even messaging apps. They'll use personal info you or your company shared online to make their messages more convincing. Did that suspicious text mention anything else work-related? Yep. About our new product launch, which was shared on the company's LinkedIn page last week, I believe. Boom. That's how they got you. It's called OSINT, Open Source Intelligence. Attackers use the data posted online to craft believable lures. Lures? Oh, I get it, because, you know, fishing for data and the message is the bait. Let's say our marketing team shares a group photo from an off-site meeting. It seems harmless, right? But location tags could reveal where key employees are geographically. Visible badges might expose access cards or ID info, as well as the format used by the company, which could be fabricated for counterfeits. Comments may mention sensitive data, maybe an organization chart, or processes that are followed. All of this is gold for attackers who are creating fake profiles or a believable story with insider information to fish someone inside the organization. So I'm guessing those SMS scammers don't just pick random people? Well, some scams are generic and cast a wide net, but others are tailored to suit each victim or a group of people. And this is known as spear phishing. Attackers often target roles with decision-making power or access to money, like sales, executives, finance, etc. When a top-level exec is the target, it's known as whaling. Okay, but how do they know so much about my role? A profile on LinkedIn provides a lot of key data. If you have a public profile, anyone can view your job title, your experience, the dates where you've worked somewhere, even who you recently connected with. Attacks that cast a wider net try to leverage a recipient's excitement over winning something or receiving a freebie like those recent gift card requests. These are posing as an Apple gift card campaign that recently targeted business emails. Huh, so you're telling me criminals are actively watching what gets posted online? That's creepy. Creepy, but true. And it doesn't stop at work. Imagine this. Someone messages you on Facebook pretending to be an old friend. They say they're in town, but now stranded and need a ride to the airport or money for transportation. Who are you a mind reader too, Tina? That exact thing happened to my cousin last year. <laughs> I wish I could mind read, but it's part of my job to know a lot about recent, frequent or successful attacks to understand how attackers think. Criminals are sophisticated, but the reality is today's world makes it a little easier because people share so much online. All it takes is a little info from your public profiles like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and boom, you're a potential target. In 2020, attackers compromised internal admin tools at Twitter by using phishing. They were able to tweet a Bitcoin scam from high-profile accounts like Elon Musk, Barack Obama, Uber, and Apple. They used these accounts to post messages asking for Bitcoin donations, promising to double any money sent. The attackers gained access by targeting Twitter employees with a social engineering attack, which allowed them to bypass certain security measures. This breach raised concerns about the security of social media platforms and the potential for misuse by cybercriminals. 
This attack targeted high-profile accounts, but everyday people are also at risk. Once criminals gain access to a social media account, they'll often reach out via private message to that account's family and friends. These generally contain a link to view the full contents of the message, and clicking the link leads users to a fake login page. Most unsuspecting recipients will simply think they have to log in. Again. But these portals are designed to harvest passwords and even two-factor authentication codes. Outside of social media attacks, in a recent high-profile case, cybercriminals use voice spoofing technology to impersonate a company executive. The attacker spoke to an employee in the finance department using an AI-generated version of the CEO's voice and urgently requested a wire transfer to a vendor overseas. The call was convincing, the right tone, even the correct accent. Thinking it was a real emergency, the employee transferred over $240,000. The attackers were successful and even called again asking for another transfer. And that is when the victim realized it was a scam. Oh, that's a lot of money. That's why it's so important to verify requests through known channels, even ones made verbally. With AI voice cloning now more widely accessible and constantly improving, an attacker won't sound like a stranger. They can sound like someone you know and trust. Oh, so what can I do so I don't fall for these attacks? Well, you're already off to a good start by simply asking these questions, but here's what else you can do. Any sort of phishing, whether it's an email, a call, or social media based, will often demand immediate action. Attackers prey on using fear to bypass your conscious and logical thought. So one of the best things you can do is simply to slow down and verify. Just because the sender shows as HR or your boss doesn't mean it's really them. Review your privacy settings and don't overshare company activities. Be wary of random requests. Rather, only connect with people you know in reality. Check where you're logging in and make sure it's the official website or app. While we're speaking about logins, enable multi-factor authentication wherever it's possible. But if you really want to reduce your risk, start by limiting what attackers can find out about you online. Do you have like a checklist or something I can follow? Yeah, funny you should ask. First, clean up your social media profiles. Make your personal social media accounts private and only let people that you actually know follow you or see your posts. Next, avoid listing your exact job title or team projects on public profiles. The less info attackers have, the harder it will be for them to target you. See, that's tough though. LinkedIn kind of warrants that stuff. And it's also important because I'm in sales. Sure, but you can generalize somewhat. Project Manager is a safer title than Project Manager for XYZ Launch Initiative Q2. Oh yeah, okay, that's doable. Third, be careful with photographs. If you take a selfie, remove your work badge. If a group is taking the photo, don't take it with the whiteboard full of product plans on in the background. Ugh, I'm sure I've done that before and even tagged the location. And that brings us to turning off location tagging. This prevents attackers from easily figuring out where you work or where you've traveled to or what office you generally work in. Finally, go back through your older posts and remove anything that could give out clues like travel schedules, job change announcements, or vendor shout outs. Oh, so basically assume that someone's building a virtual or cyber dossier on you, right? Exactly. Being careful online means not giving them all of the puzzle pieces. I gotta admit, the scale of these attacks seem huge. Are attackers really just writing and sending all these messages themselves? Well, historically, yes, but not so much anymore. While AI is helping employees streamline tasks, it's also helping criminals craft smarter, more personalized messages and faster than ever. Some tools can even mimic your writing style based on your public posts. So like, phishing 2.0. More like 50.0. AI has the potential to make attacks more believable and cast a wider, 
and simultaneously more targeted attacks than ever before. With AI continuing to make advances, it will empower criminals significantly. That's why it's more important than ever to try and protect yourself. So how can I tell if something was written by AI? It is tricky, but there are some tells in AI-generated content. AI-generated messages can be overly polite or oddly helpful, awkwardly formal or just too generic. They might use phrases that don't quite match how your co-workers normally talk. Like if something from my boss started with, Greetings, esteemed colleague. Exactly. Sometimes messages will repeat an idea too often or sound too polished. Most people will make small mistakes like typos, but AI messages are often error-free. AI tools are powerful, but they don't always get the nuance or the tone just right. Okay, so tone, repetition, and weird formality. Got it. Also, look for some kind of inconsistency. An attacker using AI might get your title slightly wrong or reference a project that you're not actually part of. It's a clue that they could have pulled data from somewhere without understanding the full context. That makes sense. It's not just spelling errors anymore. It's like detecting a robot with a thesaurus. Exactly. You're training your instincts and that'll help keep you safe. It's important to remember that AI is continually improving, and over time, these tells will become less frequent, so it will get even harder to detect AI. That's why you should keep educating yourself on best practices as AI becomes more sophisticated. Okay, this has freaked me out. I'm tightening up all my social media privacy settings right now. That's the spirit. Just remember, phishing doesn't stop at your work email. Smart devices mean we're constantly connected. So attacks now follow us 24 seven. Let me guess, stay cautious. It's the only way to remain cyber safe. <laughs> You've got it.